You see, when God made that thing, that organ called the brain, when God made it, he had something that I want you to notice. He had something here in the front called the frontal lobe. The frontal lobe is very, very precious. It's very, very special. And you will find that when God would say, be transformed in the renewing of your mind, when he would say, you keep your mind stayed on me, perfect peace, the God who would say, my son, give me thine heart, you will find that what he wants us to do is he wants us to understand we have something called a frontal lobe. And that frontal lobe is very important, saints, because you will notice that here is what the frontal lobe does. The executive functions of the frontal lobes involve the ability to recognize future consequences resulting from current actions. Is that a good thing? Well, that's a very important thing. How, uh, wouldn't it be wonderful, parents, if we can instill this in our children, that we can help our children recognize future consequences resulting from current actions? Wouldn't it be a beautiful thing if we can solidify that in the minds of our children? We'd have a whole different generation of youth. But not only that, it goes on to say to choose between good and bad actions. Do you understand why God wants the mind? God says, I want your mind because it is your mind. It is that frontal lobe. That's what you're using to make choices whether you're going to follow me or follow Satan. So literally, God says, I want your mind. Now watch. It says to choose between good and bad actions or better and best override and suppress socially unacceptable responses and determine similarities and differences between things or events. All of this are connected to the functions of what is called the frontal lobe. And therefore, what we have to do is we have to do everything possible to keep our frontal lobe in a very healthy state. We have to keep our frontal lobe in a very strong state so that way our minds can always be stayed on God and we can receive all the benefits from perfect peace, proving what is that perfect and acceptable will of God, and being able to give God our minds so that as he has it, we can become like him. It is imperative that we take care of this frontal lobe. Is that right? Now, the question is how? How could we do it? What are some ways that we can do it? Did you know that the Bible does not leave us aloof? Did you know that the Bible actually shows us through the example of Jesus Christ, one of the key ways that he was able to keep his mind stayed on God. Now, please understand I said one of the. In other words, I am not minimizing what we're talking about tonight to the only thing. But this is one of the key things that actually kept Christ so focused on his father that he always chose to follow his father rather than follow the influences of Satan. Notice again the function of the frontal lobe. It is to help us choose between good and bad actions. Did you know how Christ chose between good and bad actions or what actually assisted him? Observe. Did you know that the Bible gives us a text of Scripture that you and I would do well to consider? And I want you to think about this. There's a passage of Scripture that I am sure if any of you are church-going people, Bible students, or anything like that, you more than likely have read this verse of Scripture at some point in your life. Notice what the verse says. Therefore, the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. How many of you have read this verse before? You've read this verse before, haven't you? You've heard this verse several times, I would imagine. This is a clear text where we learn that Emmanuel is none other than God with us. This was talking about Jesus in Matthew 1 and verse 23. So here it is that this is the passage of Scripture that is very familiar. But what's many a times unfamiliar to us is the next verse. You see, the next verse says this. Talking about Emmanuel, watch this. It says this. Butter and honey shall he eat, that he may know to refuse the evil and choose the good. Now that part of scripture, many of us are not familiar with. Did you know that part of the reason why Christ was able to choose good and refuse evil was because of the diet he had? Tonight's subject, diet and the mind. Jesus was given a diet in his day. You remember? You remember? And keep in mind, butter and honey in those days, that was considered a very, very good, uh, high-level type of, of dietary practice. And you know how I know that? Because what did God, remember when God talked about Canaan land? And he told the children of Israel, when you leave Egypt, you're going to go through the wilderness and go in Canaan land. What did God say Canaan land would be filled with? A land flowing with? 
Milk and honey. Did you know butter comes, you know, milk and butter, same thing. Milk and honey, butter and honey. Literally, that same wonderful diet, that was a diet in those days. You see, those of us who were here opening night, we studied that in the last days, the animal kingdom is going to become so diseased that we cannot partake of these type of products like the dairy and all these things. But the Bible shows in those days, butter and honey shall he eat. And it was of such a diet that it literally helped him, assisted him in knowing how to refuse evil and choose good. You know what that teaches us then? That means that diet plays a role in the strengthening of the mind, yea, the frontal lobe. And this is why God says so much in his word on the point of diet. And this is why we're talking about diet and the mind. So therefore, what we have to start looking at now is governing principles when it comes to our eating and drinking. The reason why is because now we understand what's going on. Number one, many diseases taking place in our world today are wholly imaginary, things that's going on in the mind. So if we really want to overcome many of our diseases, we're going to have to help strengthen the mind. Well, God says, well, there's ways to do that. If you keep your mind stayed on me, he says you will have perfect peace. If you allow me to renew your mind, he says you will be able to prove and know the acceptable and perfect will of God. God says, my son, give me your mind. Let me educate it. Let me train it. So we said, all right, I'm willing to do that. But practically, how? One of the ways outside of choice, God says, I want you to start paying better attention to what you're putting in your system. God says, I want you to start paying better attention of what you're eating and what you're drinking and what you're putting in your body because now we understand that there is a direct connection between diet and the condition of the mind. If you're following thus far, let me hear you say amen. amen. So now the Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians, the 10th chapter, which was our text of scripture for the opening, it states, whether therefore ye eat or drink or whatsoever you do, do all to the glory of God. Now, there are many ways to understand this verse. The Apostle Paul was actually counseling people, fellow brothers, fellow Jews. He was actually counseling them and telling them, listen, if somebody serves you some food that may have been offered to an idol, he says, look, don't go around when they serve you the food. Don't go around asking them, listen, was this offered to an idol? He says, don't even bring that up. Literally, you read that in 1 Corinthians 10. He says, don't bring those things up. If they lay it before you, go ahead and eat it. But if they tell you, hey, this has been offered to an idol, go ahead and have a piece of it, then he says, then go ahead and say, well, thank you, but no thank you. Now, when he said this, he was saying, the reason I'm giving you this counsel is because our goal is to win people to Jesus. So the context of this verse, when he says, whether therefore you eat or drink or whatsoever you do, do all to the glory of God, the context of the glory of God was that whatever you do, whatever you eat, whatever you drink, keep in mind the goal of glorifying God, making him known, and drawing the people to his heart. 